So, today I'm here for a 10K special. Very excited about it. What we are going to do today is I'm gonna do my nails, this thing involved, because it's gonna be gel nails. Can't really find a good angle that would allow for both conversation and nails happening at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is like whenever some fun is happening, I'll show it to you. And when nothing is happening and I'm just putting on layers or whatever, I'll just be answering questions. Questions that I asked on my community tab. Let me put on my little gloves that I wear. <laughs> when I use the lamp. Anyway, so I made this little <laughs> glove to protect my hands from using UV light, but I don't know if it actually does anything, I'm not gonna lie, but it makes me feel better that I'm not frying my hands whenever I do my nails. I also have this magnetic nail polish today, which is, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's kind of like, sometimes it's called like milk tea, sometimes it's called cat eye or dragon eye. It depends on like what color you're using and what kind of base you're using and stuff like that. I don't know what color I want to use today. I don't want something blue, but I don't know if I have anything like satisfyingly blue. I feel like I have only greenish blue colors. Ah, whatever, let's go with orange. All of this nail prep dehydrators and stuff like that, they're so stinky. The worst smell ever, honestly. But it does keep it on your nails longer. God, when I tell you it smells disgusting, it smells like something from the dentist office, like one of those bonding agents. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm remembering it wrong, but it just kind of triggers my memory. And we're gonna start with questions. The first question that I got is from Chrissy Elric. Chrissy asks, what are your thoughts on gender roles? Don't like them. <laughs> I want to say like if you're into them, like power to you, whatever, but honestly, no, no. <laughs> I just don't like them. I just don't like gender roles. You know, I was raised in a very traditional society, let's say, which I like to call those kind of kinds of views like outdated rather than traditional because traditions, it shouldn't be used for this type of stuff because it kind of has this, it gives this word a negative connotation. I don't think there's anything wrong with having traditions. It's just, I don't think that being close-minded or bigoted in any way is somehow a tradition. Do you know what I mean? So I would say that like outdated kind of views and um, even though I was raised with them, I kind of always hated them, didn't know how to explain what I was feeling for a really long time because people would be talking about the ideals or about the things that they believe in or whatever, but no one ever talked about things like feminism or other issues, not issues, but other ways of thinking or seeing the world or whatever. I've always hated all of this outdated stuff. I don't think there's any logic in thinking that one gender is supposed to be behaving one way or that and the other one is supposed to behave a certain way i think that you should be thinking of yourself as a human being first and develop your own identity rather than look to your gender as a way to determine how you should behave short answer don't like gender roles <laughs> if you could own the wardrobe of a character from any series which one would you choose i was actually talking to my mom about this question because i was just talking about my plans for this video and she and she asked me what i might say for this question and i i kind of did a know at first and and she suggested blair from gossip girl i would say that you know i really i do like her wardrobe and i really she was like one of my favorite characters and stuff like that growing up, but it's a little bit outdated. It's very 2010-ish, you know, so I wouldn't be saying that I would wear that Especially because I think that it's a little bit like her style is very determined in terms of I like to experiment with things and I like to wear very different things depending on my mood So I wouldn't say that I have like just one style that I stick to right and Blair is very much the type of person who's very I guess she just kind of follows a specific style, you know, which I don't but I do like her wardrobe and I think that I mean my mom has a point You know, I would like her wardrobe. I also think I like Ray's outfits from Sailor Moon the 90s and I also really like totally Spice Girls like their outfits Buffy has really good outfits. Yeah, that would be my answer one of those, you know. Or, uh, oh, Clueless Cher. I know it's basic of me to say that, but I, it's just, it's cute. And it's just so 90s and I love that. Labra Rabura asked um, if I would be looking at series targeted for males in the future, like the characters that are mostly males and give styling reviews about them. Probably, yeah. Like, um, I'm just not the best at men's fashion, mostly because I mean, it's not, like I can tell you if something is good or bad, if it looks good or not, but I don't usually pay attention to it as much, so that's why it doesn't really come to mind as much. But I will do it, I will expand 
my catalog with in terms of like styling and stuff like that and uh, talk about men's fashion as well so yeah we'll talk about it at some point okay so i'm almost done with the base coats next question is from may or my i don't know which way to pronounce it let me know let me know if you see this let me know how to pronounce it properly i'd love to know your dream wardrobe and which cartoon do you see yourself most in be it style wise or that it's a cool world i would say winx would be my answer i think that it's one of those worlds that's really like it has all the magic and everything but it's still it's not too dark and it's futuristic i really think it's for example i love i love witch but which world the current time and place is more advanced than for example the meridian and i know that there are other places in in the universe like it's not just the meridian and earth but i genuinely i just don't like dark stuff in terms of aesthetics i like it as a counterpoint but i don't like it as the main thing in which the earth world is like the bright world to compare to whatever worlds they go to except for of course for guest kendrakar i don't know i just like really bright things sparkly things i really like winx world because it's just it merges both sci-fi and computers and technology and magic so it doesn't feel like you're living in like prehistoric times or something like that like for example harry potter the whole aesthetic is so 15th century or something like that in terms of a lot of things and i just can't do it i just can't do it i hate everything that's about all those old times where people had to poop in holes i just can't be doing that not my thing whatsoever i mean i get it if you like it because the thing is the outfits are really cool and interesting and the fact that the aesthetic is so different is really cool and interesting but i'm just a very futuristic type of person utopia kind of futuristic person i like to pretend like things are gonna work out um <laughs> and their outfits and their transformations i just love that uh, when you get like a power up you get a new outfit and the wings oh god so good all those fairies showed i showed wings to one of my friends and she was like oh the outfits are not what i would expect from fairies because there's like a very specific aesthetic that kind of associated with fairies you know again i have appreciation for that aesthetic but it's not my aesthetic i would never go for like that kind of i'll put a cu couple of pictures like this type of fairy is not my thing i'm a like i specifically i'm very interested in this winx world okay first first coat thank you to all of you guys for saying congrats on reaching 10k thank you also another question from a salute from sabrina spell i'm gonna pronounce it a bit weird just because i don't want you to get on my butt about things you know so the salute is asking <laughs> what do you think the best cartoon to tv series wardrobe has been and what do you think has been the worst i looked up a list of cartoons that have been made into a tv series i'm assuming live action because cartoon to live action right and there's not a lot of tv series that has been made it, it's mostly a cartoon tv series made into a live action movie that's like a thing that happens more often and i would say that i'm gonna have to pick movies just because there's not a lot of like tv shows and i'd say i think that scooby-doo was pretty well made in terms of adapting from cartoon to a live action and keeping that kind of brightness and saturation in the movie another example of that would be probably grinch i think grinch was well done in terms of the aesthetic and everything it looks really really good comparable to the cartoon you know it didn't lose any color and the worst i mean winx was really bad really really bad genuinely just it pisses me off that it's not that they made this show so dull it, it, i mean it does piss me off that they made it so dull but just the fact that Winx is not gonna get another chance in the realm of live action, you know? At least for another, I don't know, like 10 to 20 years. Like, I can tell you for sure that no one's gonna be paying for rights to a cartoon to remake it into a live action for a while after this live action because it's already out there, it's doing numbers and whatever, and people are gonna be associating it with this new show for a while. So the chance for Winx to have like a good adaptation has been definitely lost for at least the next 20 years if people are even gonna remember of winx as a show in 20 years to maybe try again what else was really bad there's a lot of them like that kind of just don't don't really work have you seen the powerpuff girls pictures it's tragic for now i saw the main characters wearing that dreadful colorful leather jacket oh, it just it always happens put that dreadful 
leather jacket from 2013 on everyone. It's like, well, we've moved past it. It's 2021. It's eight years. Eight years past. Nobody wants this right now. And also another question from the suit again. Since fashion is always changing, if you had the power to make one style become big, like as big as e-girl, cottagecore and other tiktok trends what style would it be and why if you're talking about something that i really like that i would want to be big i would say that i probably wouldn't want things that i really like to become big and they they always do because like of course i'm i'm influenced by everything that's going on and we all have this inkling of what's coming next you know in terms of trends and everything so things that i start liking a year later everyone's gonna be wearing it and i'm gonna be sick of it and it's like that for a lot of people i think that we kind of want a thing and we can't find it anywhere and then when it's everywhere in every store uh we're already over it with most trends i would say that i don't really like want it to be as big as e girl trend or cottage core or something like that but i'm not i'm also not against it per se I, i'd say that i want things to be as fluid as they are right now that there's a lot of dominant styles happening at the same time and and because of tiktok there's a lot of people experimenting with their style and it's really fun to observe i think that is what i do like about right now is that a lot of people have been experimenting with their style and you can find so many different things right now it's just more fun than having one thing be like the thing you know so the next question is from lisa del paz i hope i'm pronouncing it right she's asking how when did it get into fashion uh, because she definitely had a hate all girly things phase and she wonders if I did the same uh, or if I always had this interest also thanks for the time and effort you put in every video thank you <laughs> thank you for noticing oh my gosh whenever like I put a lot of effort into a video I'm like would that even come off in the video would the video be actually better sometimes I'm like did I do this for nothing is it is it not even gonna enhance the video in any way but it seems like people actually do get more out of some of my videos because of the effort so i'm glad that that's actually a thing because i think that our media should be more should offer us more i don't know if you've seen this conversation i think i think it was um bob burnham had like an interview or something like that i'm not sure if it was uh, part of his stand-up comedy thing or if it was part of a, an interview but he had this conversation about like this kind of monologue about um our media and how it needs to offer more to the audience there's this tendency with people who create media or who are in the public eye to have this kind of laziness about them which is one of the reasons why I've been kind of really disappointed by the Western music scene recently, not because the music is bad, the music is good, it's because I kind of want it to be more all-encompassing and I think that they should be trying more in all aspects, not just one, for example, you know? As to fashion, how I got into it and hate girly things, I had a, I had a kind of a tomboy phase, but not really. I think I was saying that I was a tomboy to a lot of people, especially guys, because I was trying to get some kind of social currency with them when I was very little when I was like around 9 to like 11 years old or something like that because I was feeling the pressures of sexism and having to talk to people and always be put in the position of a second class citizen you know we all know that it's a retaliation tactic that we kind of adapt unknowingly trying to get more of an equal footing in the conversation but with age I kind of stopped caring about that just because I, I wasn't interested in having conversations with guys as much if they are especially if they are sexist I just don't want to talk to you I just don't I don't have to to be frank I don't have to there's no reason for me to be wasting my time on people that don't see me as a human being in terms of like fashion and whatever I kind of even my interest in fashion right now is more about my interest in self-expression and art I came to this to this kind of like interest in fashion just because I'm interested in conceptual art and fashion is one of those mediums that you can use to deliver your concepts effectively, right? Because it is something that you can wear, it's something that is part of your everyday life and it's also one of those things that like, for example, I don't know if you've seen dresses from Iris von Herpen, I'm gonna also put it on the screen just so you don't have to look it up or anything like that. This is art to me and my background is in art. This is something we're gonna talk about further like later on when I have another 
question that's specifically about that. I'm interested in fashion from art perspective rather than fashion history or, or fashion styles. That's why I don't know a lot of terminology because I'm not really interested in terminology as much as I just want to talk about color, the architectural qualities of the piece. I want to talk about draping and stuff like that. I want to talk about, about it from an arts perspective rather than fashion perspective. I like I don't really care for any like snobby references and stuff like that. I kind of get to know fashion more and more because I make these videos and I'm kind of talking about what I like and I have to explain myself a bit more effectively because I'm on camera so I kind of look up ways to describe what I'm thinking but my interest in fashion is interest comes from interest in art rather than fashion industry. I really do like fashion as an expression. I'm not into this glossy status kind of things. It's basically, I got into it because of art and because I'm interested in characters and how they are portrayed and aesthetics and I just love some shows or some art that is very complex in terms of world building. I especially love when that world building is visual as well, when it's very strong visually and is very separate from everything else because the creators have committed to something, you know? In terms of hating old girly things and stuff like that, I kind of had more of um, I never thought about fashion when I was younger, obviously, because I didn't think of it as like a thing that's something you study or something that you participate in as much as I just saw it as a way of self-expression. But I didn't have any access to anything. There, like, I grew up in Siberia. There's, there was nothing I could buy, I didn't have money to buy, I mean like, you could buy something, I just didn't have money to to wear anything interesting or anything girly or anything like that, I kind of wore whatever I had didn't think about it that much outside of self-expression and just trying to maybe mimic the powerful characters from cartoons that I was watching or from books that I was reading and stuff like that another question, listen, so this is the first coat of like the magnetic nail polish so at first it just looks kind of regular layer of just sparkle right and then what you do is you get this little thing this magnet and then you can just hold it over it my hands are shaking so much oh my gosh it's just like a line that kind of moves across so another question from elisa and chips a legion chips Elisa and Chips. The first question is, do you have any hobbies besides fashion and makeup? If yes, what are they? Oh, are you planning to talk about them on your channel or do you want your channel to be only fashion focused with the type of content you create nowadays? My specialty is in art, specifically fine art. So art that's usually in galleries and stuff like that. Why is it my specialty? It's because I have a degree in art. I have a degree in fine art, in conceptual art, conceptual visual art specifically. I'm like an installation artist. I make installations installations based on concepts and stuff like that. I think that I would want to talk more about that because this is something that I enjoy but it's very heady and specific because it comes like well, things that I want to talk about are kind of they require a lot of background information from a bunch of art theory you know so it's not that interesting to listen to if you're not into art theory so I don't know how I'm going to incorporate it but for example I've made some videos that are more about concepts but kind of easy concepts like photo shoot concepts for example I have one video I think where I made a video about a photo shoot that I've done where I talked about building a concept for the photo shoot maybe I would want to do more of that on this channel in general I have a lot of different interests I don't know how YouTube algorithm is gonna like that diversity because it seems that I started to get more traction when I started to focus on one topic so I don't know how this is gonna work for me let me know if you know anything about this kind of stuff about like how to make sure that you keep growing and stuff like that on YouTube while still retaining a lot of diversity to your content because that's why I kind of made Pretty Little Liars review short video you know because I don't want this channel to just become very boring and just about styling because I love styling but it will become boring at some point it will become boring if that's what I do every single week and that's what I deliver every single week because there's still archetypes to the characters for example so I'm still gonna be delivering some speeches that are similar in terms of some outfits or some styling or whatever you know I want to make sure that it's more interesting than that for everyone for you guys and for me second layer Ooh. Ooh. 
I also like some science. I actually was going to go into sciences when I moved to Canada and I was studying. I moved to Canada when I was already in high school. It was really stressful because I didn't speak the language and I did not know, did not understand the culture. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I can't be in the arts in this environment because I don't know what's happening and I can't communicate efficiently with people. So I'm gonna have to stay in the sciences. So I was kind of actually um, in high school, I was doing primarily sciences and I never painted or did any art before I mean I did like photoshopping and I did edits and stuff like that online when I was 12 or 13 you know but I never actually did like art art until I went to university also do you have some projects in life some dreams you'd want to realize I really want to continue making conceptual art but I'm interested in art that's outside of galleries and to me I think one of the best ways of participating in multiple mediums so not just like making one one type of art like I, I wouldn't want to introduce myself as a painter or as a installation art kind of person I would want to do multimedia projects for concepts so I feel like the best way to approach that would be through music because music nowadays incorporates so many different things like choreographies it also incorporates production that could deliver your messaging as well lyrics it also involves visuals like videos and lyric videos and other things like that and I could could have installation art in music videos for example so I feel like it's just very versatile kind of direction I would maybe want to do like conceptual art music I've done I've done some some work but I'm um, record produce write everything myself but the I struggle with production sometimes to actually make it sound finished instead of um, like my vocals especially, I, I struggle with finding that right place in the mix for them. I do, so strange, it has like some weird like dark shadow today on it. I think it's because it's the color, because it's kind of dark, um, it's like bronzy and it looks weird on top. So I find that really interesting because I have a lot of ideas as to like how to make that work. I've done a project before, kind of I submitted it as one of the last projects in university and it was art pop kind of short four songs EP and it's the songs are really weird like they're not easy to listen to because they're they're <laughs> they're really out of the norm let's say it's basically feels like a lot of demos just because again with production i struggle making it sound finished in terms of the mixing and stuff like that and i need to figure that out but i have a hard time and i hope that in the future i'll have more resources to actually do something to maybe pay someone to do it you know and like work with me and maybe find some people because it's also really hard to find people that you vibe with on that kind of level because I don't want to be making something. If I were to do, to, to use music as a medium, it's more about the fact that nowadays music involves so many different things and I want to do all of those different things about one topic or one concept. In the future, I would also want to like have a production company for artists, like have a production company specifically for fine artists who are looking to expand upon art theory and experiment with it and stuff like that. I think that it would be cool to have something like that. And what I like about YouTube right now is that it's like a way of communicating and finding people who are like-minded making content it's more conversational right like what I what I'm making every single week it's not like art that involves just making art this is more about communication because even when I talk about art or whatever I still communicate my thoughts about it rather than I'm presenting just just simply just presenting art you know also by the way if you ever if you live somewhere in Vancouver you might see my artwork on like one of the screens there's a screen in Vancouver that belongs to Grunt Gallery and if you if you happen to pass by it at some point you might gonna see my work on the screen um, it's part of like a show there and it has a bunch of other artworks there too so the chances are slim because you know like if you're just passing by the show is going like it's really low chance that you're just gonna happen upon it but it's there and it's gonna be there for like i think another half a year or something like that just showing up again and again so yeah if you see it send me a picture <laughs> basically i really like big projects and i think that i really like multimedia projects that are accessible to the public who are not spending four years in university studying art history it's still like i, I want kind of like multi-layered art where if you are interested in one aspect of it you can enjoy it and if you want to dive deeper into it you can 
like it, it has depth but it's not it doesn't like create this aversion in people who aren't deep into art theory or something like that you know sometimes you just sometimes some art is just so hard to engage with sometimes even i have a hard time enjoying some art just because it's so up its own ass you know i had a lot of people in like classes where i would disagree with them about the fact that like one of the guys in one of my classes was like what if people are not spending enough time looking at my artwork and it's like well they don't owe you anything they don't they don't have to even with this like for example with youtube like i spend 40 hours for example on a video on like a styling video or something like that sometimes more and i still don't think that anyone who opens my video owes me anything in terms of like if they don't want to they don't have to watch it they don't have to engage with it you know it's not like like i feel like there's some kind of this attitude with a lot of artists where they think that even if they're not trying to make it accessible to people that people owe them their time and their attention because art is so important the truth is even though i believe that art is important because obviously i'm i spend way too much of time money and other things like that to even get a degree in art you know obviously i think it's important but i don't think that like i'm not doing an open heart surgery like we have to have some kind of humor about ourselves or not take ourselves too seriously we should take our art seriously but don't take yourself so seriously you know and that's one of the reasons why i'm not interested in making very heady art that has no regular life application that's why i'm so drawn to using music in the future to create concepts and to create installation art and maybe then have gallery openings of installations from music videos and other things like that like i want to make that type of art that's installation based or paintings or other things like that that i was trained in but i also wanted to be infused with life and be applicable to people's lives you know like having a physical album buying an album that's not just a jewel case with just the cd in there but it have like for example like buy a photo book with the concept and stuff like that because the concept is so well developed having this kind of inspiration in daily life to just look at this work of art that someone created it's not just about random things it's very pointed very well developed very well thought out the lyrics the photos the video the references in all of those things are all important and i wish i wish more of like art was like that i kind of realized that the more the more i was in conceptual art the more i realized that there are so many people who just slide into a good career because of nepotism and other things like that and their art is very lazy and it's more about them doing just something and then explaining it afterwards and trying to throw as many terms as many like theory terms as possible to justify what they did and there's oftentimes just no sincerity to it sometimes i have to stop myself also from like when it in my last year i started to make so much art that was communicating more to the audience of my peers of of, of other fine artists in conceptual art rather than it was communicating to the audiences that are doing other things people who are in other fields and and who are also contributing to society in different ways i want to talk to people who are not just doing the same thing as i do as well that people who are interested for example more in fashion than in art for example or people who are interested in physics more there than they are interested in art and then talking about concepts of folding of time with them you know i really want to do more of that kind of stuff like I, i've also made like photo books and stuff like that i really like printed things the wrappers like those plastic wraps that are on like albums or whatever god i love them so much i don't know why i don't know why but taking it off is like a religious experience <laughs> In any case, I'm also enjoying right now that I have YouTube as a form of communication that I can share my thoughts on art and on fashion and on other things and just have a bit of fun too. And it's cool to have like you guys talking about your opinions as well. It's really cool to see what other people are thinking about things that I already have an opinion on and be like, okay, maybe, maybe you're right, maybe you have a point. Right now I'm working really hard on the Sailor Moon video because I really want to finish it and I really want it to be a really engaging video. I have so many points I need to make. Oh my God, so many. I wanna show you this because I'm probably gonna mention it in the Sailor Moon video when I'm actually talking about it. Just look at this. This is me writing pro prose 
and cons and then I made four different sections for different topics I kind of kind of like added them together which is world building writing art aspects of the show and related to art but props and clothes kind of thing and I'm already done with two sections writing them I'm gonna probably film one of them maybe tomorrow I still have two to go and I'm kind of I'm, I'm already like it's gonna be done this this week but I'm gonna work really hard on it the entirety of the week because it is a big one it's a big project and I want it to be fun and engaging I want it to be very engaging visually too because I get distracted so easily I need things to always happen on the screen and hopefully you guys are gonna like it hopefully you're gonna find it fun to watch tell me about yourself tell me what you do tell me like what you are planning on doing like if you have projects like that like the same question basically that at least like I'm gonna call you Elisa right now you tell me that like tell me in the comments if you're not Elisa. <laughs> I just want to know. Answer the question that Elisa asked me about projects in life, some dreams you want to realize and stuff like that. I'm just curious to see what you guys are up to, what your what fields you are in, or what fields you are planning on going into or interested in going into. Just let me know. It's fun. It's fun to know what people are doing. <laughs> in any case, these are my nails. They kind of didn't turn out as well as I thought they would, but they're still kind of cool because of the magnetic effect, right? I think so. Bye!